Welcome to Franklin Almanac. I'm Pollaxani Majari. This is our 14th edition of Almanac, a compendium of a life in Franklin. As always, we'll bring you important stories. What's happened? What's happening? What matters? Franklin is known for its familiar faces, but on this episode, we introduce you to the new faces of the town. We will also explore a rally raising awareness on one of America's greatest issues, all on a brand new episode of Franklin Almanac. Jim Dacey is one of Franklin's most beloved treasurers. After 18 years in the role, he has decided it is time to begin a new journey, retirement. His story begins many years ago as his family is best known for Dacey's market in Franklin. He has since been on the finance committee and later became the town treasurer collector, a job he considered an honor. As of early November, Mr. Dacey passed on his job to his assistant, Carrie Bertone, the town's new treasurer collector. A 33-year Franklin resident, Carrie tears up as she mentions how much of a privilege this new role is. I sat down with the both of them to bid farewell to one and welcome another. So I just want to thank you both for taking the time to sit down with me today um, to talk about your outgoing role and your new role. So Jim, I'd like to uh, start off with you. I know that you've spent 18 years as the town treasurer collector. Tell us about how you got into this role. I know you first used to be in the finance committee, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, my family, we owned a, a store here in Franklin and uh, uh, saw a lot of people every day and people were approaching me mm -hmm. back in the uh, mid 80s to run, to late 80s to run for town council. Right. Uh, and uh, I was saying, no, I don't want to do that. Right. I don't want to do that. And the finance committee position opened up. So uh, I put my name in and uh, was appointed to finance committee in 1989, served for 10 years. Um, uh, there was a, a treasurer uh, at the time was Donna Brunelli. Uh, she had uh, uh, been serving for about six years at that time. And she had uh, a job opportunity with one of the, uh, one of the municipal banks that uh, the town uh, was dealing with at the time and right. uh, so she gave her notice and we had a special election which I lost by 50 votes and oh, that was in so the December <laughs> of right. December of um, 98 mm -hmm. uh, that was an 11 month term so right. November of uh, 99 I ran again and I won uh, by 350 votes and I've been Wonderful. there ever since the the position became appointed in 2000 and 13, mm -hmm. um, the voters voted to make it an appointed position and uh, I was appointed in January of 14 to okay. the position. Resigned as the elected treasurer collector, became the appointed. Um, so that's how I got into it. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, you know, the family business uh, helped me prepare for it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, my mother, who was uh, mm -hmm. uh, a, uh, an account, not an accountant, but uh, she uh, she was somebody who worked in finances, and she had a degree in finance. Uh, worked in the state house uh, oh, wow. many yeah. years ago. Interesting. Um, but <laughs> she was the numbers person for the mm -hmm. family business, and she taught me a lot, and uh, so it prepared me well for for this. Mm -hmm. Now, in your role as treasurer collector, what did you find to be the most challenging part of that position in the past eighteen years? Uh, well, at first, learning the job, because I <laughs> right. walked in, I was elected on a Tuesday, <laughs> yeah. and I walked in on a Wednesday. Wow, and, uh, okay. You know, that, I remember that first day, um, uh, and, you know, after uh, eight hours in the, in, the, in, the, in the office, going home with a massive headache that night. <laughs> From oh, all of that my, knowledge. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, but, you know, that was, learning that job and, and and going to the annual school, it took me six years of uh, going to school and taking tests to become fully certified as a Massachusetts uh, collector and a Massachusetts wow. treasurer. It's mm -hmm. two different certifications. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, that was uh, that was difficult, but uh, you know, as part of as the day to day job, you know, trying to modernize it. Mm -hmm. right. um, you know, when we first started, we accepted cash and checks. That was the only way you could make a mm -hmm. payment. We, our cash book was an actual book where we hand wrote <laughs> everything in. Right. Um, we, uh, we moved that to Excel spreadsheets uh, mm -hmm. after about four years of uh, using a book. I said, I, can't, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. We've got to, we got to move into 
the 20th century. Right. <laughs> um, Got to keep up with the times. We do. <laughs> um, trying to move into you know uh, the, the modern era, mm -hmm. I think, was a, was a challenge, mm -hmm. and we've been successful. Great. I mean, I know that you've been able to accomplish a lot in your role, and uh, I know that you mentioned that there are a few challenges, but with every challenge, I'm sure there's a lot of moments of reward and and love for your job. What is yeah. something that really stands out to you as one of your most rewarding experiences? You know, I, I felt good about refunding bonds and saving the town a ton of money, $2.9 million with wow. five refundings over the years mm -hmm. uh, and interest costs. Mm -hmm. um, that's been re very rewarding. Um, trying to get the information out online for people so that they can okay. pay bills online. Mm -hmm. uh, th that was that was rewarding. People were asking for that, and we managed to do it. Well, Carrie, I want to um, switch over to you. Now, I know that you are the assistant yes. treasurer right now, and you're going to be taking over Jim's position. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've held um, former positions at EMC as well as Putnam Investments, yes. and you have been in the town for about 30 years. Yeah. So how do you think that your career background has really prepared you for this role? Um, I think it, it, it's been, it, it's a great foundation mm -hmm. that I've built. Um, I, my work ethics from, I went to Katherine Gibbs, and if you know a Katie Gibbs girl, um, <laughs> they, they're very strict. Exactly. You know, I went to school all day dressed mm -hmm. professionally, and then uh, you got out of school at four and you took a job. So my organizational skills and, and my grammar, mm -hmm. um, that brought me the professional. That's, you know, that's my professionalism. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've always worked in a team type atmosphere, and I, and I love it. Um, right. That was one of the things um, I always looked up to my manager, supervisor, mm -hmm. who I worked for. I always liked working with people. I don't like, you know, I like working with a group and I liked um, kind of working together right. to solve a problem. Sure. Um, so I continued that on and then in when I got into Putnam Investments, I loved the finance part of it. Mm -hmm. um, I liked making sure that everything balanced to a penny. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that, that is just like, yes, yeah. it's a big career sure, change. Absolutely. Um, just because I've been going and doing the same, you know, I see the same people, mm -hmm. I've established friendships, you know, and now I'm going to have to eat lunch by myself, and, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. So, but I have to say, you know, going in and working for the town, I didn't have to eat lunch by myself. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was right from the get go. Um, they just welcomed me uh, and they were very happy to have me there and whatever impact put an inside I had they were like that's great mm -hmm. good thinking um, I have so much respect for Jim and every but everybody should because he is brilliant and he mm -hmm. does everything for the town right. he thinks of you before you know when he's going to do something so what are you looking for to most in this new position I know you guys have been working together for a little bit training mm -hmm. purposes but what are you looking forward to is taking over this position um, showing showing the town that I can do it and mm -hmm. I will work you know work every day and work as hard as I can which which is pretty hard mm -hmm. to uh, to be the best treasurer this town has ever had next to the next to this. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, you. there could be things, you know, I, I, I have his knowledge, mm -hmm. I do, and and um, and he's helped me even say, you know, you should think about this. Um, it's so he's so great already to have a good preparing, exactly. oh my gosh, uh, to have a mentor, and I'm, yeah. and I'm a big advocate of, of mentorship. I was a mm -hmm. part of it in my old job as well, mentee and mentor. Mm -hmm. there, there will be challenges, but one of the things is, um, you know, not making Jim proud, you know, but mm -hmm. saying, okay, yep, she gets it. Right, yeah, she that, that's it. a proud moment. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, I know that you've been here for quite a long time mm -hmm. in the town, um, but going into your new role, there might still be people out there who don't know much about you. Mm -hmm. um, so for the viewers at home, <laughs> what do you want the residents to know about you as you move into this new role? I'm, I'm a very hard worker. Um, but I also uh, have a, I'm a good listener. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a good listener and I, I'm there to help. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not there to uh, change a lot of things. You know, I, as a manager, I've learned that change is good, but you need to approach it um, slowly sometimes. Sure. You know, but mm -hmm. if something has to be changed, you know, right away, um, you help that team. Um, so I think what I want the, 
uh, the town of Franklin to know is that, you know, I, I have two children that I, I, you know, adore and respect and they're, they've done, they're doing so well and I can't wait to watch them mm -hmm. succeed. Um, but I'm also, uh, I get so excited telling them when I told them I got the assistant treasurer job, right. you know, I just, you know, look what mom did. Yeah. And then, um, when I got the treasurer collector, you know, that was a big moment. Sorry, mm -hmm. it really was. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so I guess that's kind of what I wanted to know. Sure. You know, want them to know that I, I am honored to have this position and I will do what I can to succeed. Awesome, and, and finally, I'd love to know, as you move into this position, what is your goal for the next <laughs> few years? What are you hoping to accomplish? Um, to maintain what, what we have done, mm -hmm. what Jim has done, you know, um, I, obviously, the bond rating, you know, to be a AAA, sure. uh, is right, right yeah. around the corner. I feel. <laughs> it's this close. Right, that close. Right. right. So mm -hmm. that would be great, mm -hmm. and um, to continue to um, just do the right thing for the town with mm -hmm. the, the with all of the infrastructure that's coming up and the budget, and mm -hmm. you know, want the town's people to be happy to live here. Wonderful. Yeah. And Jim, as you make your way out of this position. What is your final message to the town and to the viewers? And I've enjoyed um, seeing the people come in and pay in person, um, uh, come in and talk about any issues they may have with mm -hmm. tax bills and so on. I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss uh, working with uh, the folks in the office. But I am looking forward to my retirement. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm. I'm just, I was just very happy to serve as the uh, treasurer collector for the town of Franklin for all this time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a privilege to serve the people of Franklin. Wonderful. Do you have any advice for Carrie? Mm -hmm. Keep plugging away. Yeah. <laughs> Call me if you need any help. I think you're always here. Already, I've already planned on coming in in January yes. to help you with the 941 taxes. Uh, we do, we do a lot of in we that do office. A lot in that office. That um, and uh, you know, we'll, uh, I'll still be around uh, to help her, but she's, uh, she's gonna do fantastic, I know she is. Well, I wanna congratulate you on thank a you fabulous 18 years, and congratulations oh, to you. you for your new position. Thank so you. thank you both for coming in, sure. and we look forward to what you will be able to accomplish in your next few years, and hopefully you enjoy retirement, which I'm sure you will. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you both. We want to congratulate Jim Dacey on a successful 18-year tenure as a town's treasurer. We hope you enjoy retirement. Another congratulations goes to Carrie Bertone, the new Franklin Treasurer Collector. We wish you the best in this role. In a previous Franklin Almanac episode, we mentioned the hashtag 2069 movement geared to raising awareness for the opioid crisis in our state. The number 2069 represents the amount of people we lost to overdoses in Massachusetts in 2016. Recently, the founders of the organization, the Trinity Episcopal Church in Rentham, held their first rally encouraging anyone to come out and listen to the stories of others. There wasn't a dry eye on the town common as family members, survivors, and police officials shared their story about how addiction has affected their lives and careers. We were able to speak to those who share their stories as well as the Safe Coalition who works to help everyone affected by addiction. Here's a glimpse of the big day. We're here this morning to say there is no shame, no need to hide, no judgment that is so severe that we will run away. And today there is a voice that is saying there is no shame in the darkest time when the light of hope seems absent. And there's no shame in the love that would have us rise up as people, joined hand in hand to take on the work that is before us. We all know the work that is before us. It is the work of lifting the burden from all of those who live under the heavy weight of an oppressive storm. You know, it is, after all, about freedom. Freedom and hope. So if today you find the hope, you find the freedom, or you find the courage to reach your hand out to someone you have never met before, and to meet that person eye to eye, and simply say, know that you are loved, then, love wins. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about what has it been like to be up there and tell that story. Um, for me personally, it helps in the healing process. Um, you know, losing a child is something I can't, I can't even explain the emotion that goes along with it. But to be surrounded by people, some people you know, some people you don't know, 
that have taken time out of their busy schedules to come here today is very, um, uh, uh, I can't even describe it. It's therapeutic. Uh, uh, more than therapeutic. I just uh, blessed. I feel blessed um, that the people turned out today, that they were willing to share some of their stories. I met some amazing people. Um, we have a lot in common, and then we don't have a lot in common, but I've made a whole new group of friends, which I consider to be our family. It's, it's amazing the bond that gets created, unfortunately, through a club you really don't want to belong. When you lose your son or your daughter or your husband and wife, as Lynn just said, you get a lot of support. You get automatic. You're now a brother or sister. Today was nice to see all these people up here. As you can see, it's not just Lynn and I as mother and father being impacted or a brother or sister. It's impacting the police, the fire department, EMTs, the state government. This is a huge issue, and it needs to be addressed. It needs to continue. The awareness needs to continue to raise. Um, my son would be very happy today with the fact that we're making everyone aware of this. That's exactly what he wants us to do. He may not be here to do that now, but we're going to carry the torch for him, and we're going to be relentless and keep carrying it forward until we make some success in dealing with this issue. There are people out there who are willing to speak out to help. There are, um, of course, there's always obstacles that we have to overcome, but there's a big community out there that's willing to listen, to share, and to pray for them if that's what they would like. Um, and it's, it's a family, I, and I think we all wanna belong, and I think this is the most powerful message we can give is that we are a family, we do belong, and we do care. I'm going to read a, a, a text, a, a Facebook message that I received some months back. And uh, I had posted my story on Facebook and my testimony and how God has taken my life from addiction and turned it around and, and now I'm able to go and help others. And I received this message and it absolutely blew me away. It says, hi, Sean. As, as I read through your recent post, I just have to tell you something I have been thinking for years. I am so damn proud of you and what you have become. See, you, you may not remember, or maybe you do, but I was the EMT that revived you. <laughs> Watching you go through such an amazing transformation makes my life and my career choice all worthwhile. I also transported you during probably one of your darkest times when you were debating taking your own life. I'm so glad you didn't because of the lives you yourself have had a part of turning around. I've seen you at your worst and see how amazing I knew you could be at your best. Just know that your story is so encouraging to even those not dealing with addiction, but those who try their damnedest to save those very people that are. I love seeing your beautiful family and the wonderful th things you are doing. I've stayed silent all of these years, but felt I needed to get my sight off my chest. Keep up the great work. With much love to you and yours, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. The things that I've accomplished since returning my life around you know, God put in an angel like Catherine to revive me with Narcan that day. And so, I, again, I want to thank all of our first responders for what you do to save lives. I know it could be disheartening at times because sometimes you'll, you'll have multiple calls with the same people. But there's times, I'm telling you, we do recover. There is hope. So my message to those that are struggling is uh, you, you may have been called names, you may have taken on this identity of what some of society may be calling you, uh, but I want to tell you that that's not who you are. Uh, you're a child of God who was created for a purpose and a plan, and you are loved. And um, even if the world doesn't believe in you, there are people that will that believe in you. I believe in you. And if you uh, you want to walk hand in hand with somebody through your recovery, uh, I'm at Teen Challenge in Brockton. Come on down. The best part of today was seeing the amount of people that came out that supported those that are in real crisis and the willingness of people to share their stories uh, actually heals other people that are sitting in silence and, and out in the audience. I think that was the most powerful thing for me. 
I think for me it was the diversity of the people that were here. You had people here that were first responders from all the area towns that are really invested in um, in erasing the stigma and the no shame aspect of the whole rally. Um, you saw people that were in recovery. I had a conversation with somebody that came through our court and was in recovery for three years. So, so that was really powerful. Uh, and just the, the speakers, just the impact of the words of the speakers. Um, if you looked around while everybody was speaking, nobody left and everybody's attention was directed right at the speaker. So that, to me, that was, that's a win for everybody. On behalf of your organization, what do you want people to know who are still struggling with addiction or have lost a loved one? I think the most important thing from a safe coalition standpoint is know that you're not alone. And so what does that mean? The safe coalition has a three pronged effort right now. If you're struggling with addiction uh, or someone you love is struggling, you may call our resource line at 508 488 8105 and we will help you get treatment, whether that be detox or residential treatment. Um, I want people to know that they're not alone, that they do have a lifeline in the safe coalition. There are also support groups and educational opportunities through the coalition that we can help with. With over 200 people in attendance, this year's rally was just the beginning. The group intends to hold another rally next year with an updated hashtag of this year's numbers. Feel free to follow this campaign on Facebook at hashtag 2069 underscore signs. Election Day is one of change and opportunity in America. It was no different in the town of Franklin as residents came out to vote for their favorite candidates on November 7th. This year's candidates were a strong mix of both new faces and incumbents. The results reflected the same mix of people as town council, the school committee, and other groups welcomed newcomers, making the town even stronger than before. We spoke to both newly elected and re-elected members of town council and the school committee to find out some of their goals for the upcoming term. Let's take a look. I hope that I can bring a critical eye as someone trained in how the brain works during learning and also um, what's best for student learning. I want to bring that critical eye to each policy so that we're making decisions that are really going to best serve our students and the community as a whole. Uh, my number one goal is to get working on the strategic plan with our new superintendent so that we really have um, an, a strong value statement, strong mission statement, and uh, strong goals for the future that we can point to when we make other policies decisions and one of the policy decisions that I'm hoping to start exploring soon is um, continue uh, considering moving the school start time later for the high school students. It's an exciting time for Franklin. Uh, you know we don't often get three new councils on the council. Uh, we've got a change in our community which is fantastic and I think new blood as they're calling it right is, is very exciting for our Franklin Town Council. It brings in new ideas, fresh thoughts. We need that and we need to keep Franklin current and keep going into the future. We've got a lot of goals that we've got over the next couple of years. Uh, I think the voters spoke on what they want. They want us to be very conservative with the building here in Franklin so we're going to continue to watch that. Um, they also um, spoke highly of they want some change and we're going to continue to work on that change to see what we can do to make Franklin the best community to live in. We are already named the best community in America. We want to continue that. So uh, one of my big goals and one of I think the council's big goals is to make sure that we have a budget that is consistent with what we need to keep this, from this town operational and ensure that we um, are able to provide the services for police and fire and our schools that our community and our citizens um, want. What is it like to be able to work with people who have been on town council for many, many years? You are a newbie, so we'd like to know what that's like for you. Well, obviously, it's very exciting. I think one of the things that I'm really looking forward to doing is working very closely with both the new folks and the incumbents. I think this year, one of the things that I heard talking to people, you know, knocking on hundreds and hundreds of doors all around town, was a lot of folks wanted an infusion of new ideas, and I'm hoping that myself and the other two new town councils would be able to offer some of those ideas, but obviously experience is very important as well and I'm looking forward to working with some of the more experienced counselors who have been on for several terms at this point and, and getting their perspective. Can you tell us what some of your goals are now that you are going to be on the town council? What are you hoping to accomplish during your time there? Right. Well I have a variety of goals but I think probably the two most significant things are working to resolve the upcoming fiscal crisis that we're facing in the next couple of years particularly some of the issues around OPEB the other post-employment benefits which the town offers to retired employees and so there's been some questions about the budget there. 
working to resolve those, working with the budget subcommittee, hopefully, um, is something I'm very keen to do. And beyond that, I think I really want to work, you know, just to benefit the, the, the political culture of Franklin, hoping that many people will, be, will become involved, hoping to get, you know, fellow citizens involved in town government even more than many already are, and hoping that people will stay involved going forward. What do you think it brings to the school committee to have some new people join in? I would say it's that part's very, very exciting because when you look at the different uh, people who have been elected, everyone brings certain strengths and perspective, perspectives to the table. And the, the goal of, the, of our committee is to say, how do we best use the strengths and the passions of the people that are there so that they can work on the issues that are most important to them and the reason why they ran? So the more that we do that together as a committee, the better it will be. But I think we're so lucky to have the caliber of women that we have on that committee. So... And all women. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Moving forward, what are some of your goals that you'd like to accomplish on the school committee? Well, for us, we've there are sort of four umbrella goals that the superintendent um, and all of the schools together um, giving input have put together the district improvement plan. And there's there there around a certain areas. Clearly, social emotional growth is one really putting a lot of effort into maintaining high uh, standards for teaching, um, trying to meet the needs of, of all students, no matter where they are at performance levels. And then the other um, main goal is around uh, professional development. How do, we, how do we train teachers to reach those goals you know, of excellence in education? And then the fourth main goal is, is a particularly important one to all of us on the committee is communication. We really want to get out much more into the community and get feedback. We're sort of the the bridge between the community and the superintendent and we want to be able to get that information she's doing such a good job on that also she you, well, you know she's met with so many different groups and she's so determined to you know maintain our high level of education in franklin so it's just fun to be part of it all congratulations to all candidates and winners of the election we look forward to seeing how you make this beloved town better than ever Some people are afraid of change, but change is good. It pushes us out of our comfort zone and helps us become better and stronger. It even helps us realize just how much we are capable of achieving. I mean, you can't do great things without a little change in our lives, right? In this past month, the town of Franklin has really embraced change. We have witnessed an election that brought in both incumbents as well as new faces. We welcome a new town treasurer and Franklin residents were even involved in a local rally to fight the stigma of those struggling with substance abuse. Change is necessary. In fact, the town of Franklin wouldn't be what it is without it. Ben Franklin himself has said, when you're finished changing, you're finished. But Franklin isn't done yet. This wraps up our 14th edition of Franklin Almanac. As we continue to bring you more stories, let us know what you'd like to see. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. For Franklin Almanac, I'm Paul Xeni Manjari.